My wife found a new secret partner, and my daughter now has a hidden new father. For four long years, I was deceived by them in a repulsive and meticulous plot. This is how I discovered the betrayal, and the actions I took to vent my feelings now echo through my YouTube channel, where, driven by a mix of anger and pain, I shared my humiliation. I lost my dignity, my pride, and the love we once had. I've become a man walking the path of shame due to my own choices. I am 48 years old, and this tale of betrayal began when I was 20. At that time, I met a young woman whom I thought was perfect, at the age of 19. Our connection was intense, our chemistry impeccable. We dated for two years before her pregnancy at 21, at which point we decided to live together. At that time, I lived with my mother, as my father had passed away when I was only 15. My mother never remarried and ran a consulting business where I worked as a receptionist. My late father's construction business had been sold, and I became a father at the age of 23. Life seemed to be going well, and we got married two years later. I became a highly sought-after computer programmer, earning six figures, and our life was comfortable. However, at the age of 29, tragedy struck my wife's family when her father suffered a terrible accident that left him paralyzed from the waist down. My mother, mother-in-law, father-in-law, and sister-in-law came to live with us, and the dynamics of our life changed. While I supported the family, my wife and sister-in-law worked to help with expenses. Over time, a disagreement arose about the inheritance from my late grandmother, which my wife wanted to use to buy a house in her mother's name, while the two sisters would work to pay off my share of the inheritance. This strange proposal began to create distance between us. Two years later, my mother suffered a stroke, and disagreements about how to care for her and my father-in-law intensified tensions. My wife wanted my mother to stay in the hospital, but I insisted on bringing nurses home. Financial demands increased, and relationships became increasingly fragile. So, I share this emotionally charged story, a narrative that reflects not only betrayal but also the choices and challenges that led to the collapse of my family. What was probably more than enough, considering that they were living and feeding off my expense. My relationship with our daughter deteriorated during this time. She began to disrespect me and act openly cruel, thinking it was just a tough phase for kids. At the time, she was eight years old. My mother quickly recovered, expressing a desire to sell her consulting business and put the money in my name. A heated discussion arose with my wife, who wanted to allocate part of that money for our daughter and herself. I had already received my share of my grandmother's inheritance, but what surprised me even more was that her parents did not speak up. My mother reminded her that it was her money and that she wouldn't mind using it as a kind of insurance. However, my wife had issues with me because, for her, we didn't have a joint account. She couldn't access my account, and I couldn't access hers. She wanted a joint account. After an argument, it was decided that my mother would give me all the money, end of story. A few months passed, and unfortunately, my father-in-law passed away. It was a tough time, especially for my wife. I tried to console her as best as I could, taking responsibility for the house and daily tasks. Despite my efforts, it wasn't enough for her. The funeral, which was my responsibility, went well, but she kept complaining that I could have done better. She started sleeping in a separate room with our daughter, who was now nine years old. I convinced her to go to therapy to calm things down, and for a while, we reconnected more strongly. However, something seemed off with our daughter, she withdrew whenever I tried to talk to her. It hurt to see her like that. Two years passed as I tried to rebuild a better bond with our daughter. This time, my mother passed away. She had another stroke and, unfortunately, did not survive. I was devastated by the loss, as she had raised me alone for much of my life. I fell into a deep depression, but received no support from my wife. Our daughter didn't even attend the funeral, which saddened me. Two months after my mother's death, my mother-in-law suggested that I move out of my mother's house because I was depressed and needed to overcome it. She claimed that I was harming the environment. I calmly reminded her of the prolonged mourning that she and her two daughters went through after her husband's death. We never asked her to leave. 
I was shocked by the request for me to leave my own home. I talked to my wife about it, but she gave no response. About two days after this incident, while grabbing something from the fridge, I noticed a message on my daughter's phone. They had written something like, hey, glad the old witch is gone. Now, you can have the house to yourselves, and we can party on your birthday. My daughter was only 11 at the time, and the reference to my mother as the old witch shocked me deeply. She called me a controller, referring to me as a controlling monkey, even though I had never denied her anything except what I considered unnecessary. From wanting a pony at 6, a koala at 9, a panda and her own car at 11. Who makes such demands? I called my wife and shared the situation with her. Her response was largely about me snooping on our daughter's phone. We had a heated argument, and she stormed out again. I started sleeping in a separate bed. I tried to make amends, but she ignored me. I had to agree to our daughter's birthday party to reopen communication. Three years have passed since then, in summary, our daughter is now 15, I am 38, and my wife is 37. I had to move to another city for four months due to a new job that brought opportunities and an even better salary. Upon my return, I noticed a complete change in my wife's behavior. She quit her job and started going out more with her friends, something I supported. Her way of dressing also changed to more elegant and expensive clothes. I thought it was just a change of habit and was okay with it. However, our daughter began openly disrespecting me, acting cruelly. I kept trying, but my mother-in-law and sister-in-law insisted that it was just hormones, and she was just a child. Confident in them, I let it slide. The tension between my wife and me increased. She was experiencing new things, and I was open to it, but one day she suggested the idea of me using a chastity device. I immediately rejected the proposal, and the discussion dragged on for a week before she gave up. Our adult life began to decline from that point. Things worsened when my wife suddenly wanted to take a girl's trip with her sister, mother, and our daughter. I paid a good amount for it, but it was fine. She didn't call me for three days, and that made me uncomfortable. I asked about it when she returned, and she claimed she was just tired. The photo showed many male and female friends, which put me on alert. Two months later, it was our daughter's birthday, and I wanted to plan something special. My wife asked me not to do that, as she intended to celebrate with a girl's night out. I was surprised and expressed my opinion about taking the daughter seriously for a girl's night out. She insisted it wasn't like that, but rather with her friends and their daughters. My birthday was approaching, and our adult life became scarce, with weekly meetings. I tried more, but she always made excuses. My birthday arrived, and my wife said she needed to go shopping with our daughter. They were out for six hours, with no calls, messages, or gifts. When I asked, she claimed that a friend had an accident, preventing her from receiving my calls. Two weeks after that incident, my wife shared some photos from our daughter's camp when I received a call from her saying she needed to talk. I handed her the phone and left the room. A message arrived for our daughter, written like this, Hi, my dear daughter. Apologies for the delay. I am the lucky boyfriend of your mom. Tell her I love her and send a kiss for me. I'll message you soon. I read those words repeatedly for a whole minute, unable to believe it. Scrolling up, I realized that my daughter had replied, saying she was happy he was her mom's boyfriend and expressed the wish that he was her father. I was stunned. I decided to go to the bathroom, lock the door, and read the entire conversation. Every noted detail indicated that this man was having an affair with my wife, and our daughter was aware of it. Photos from trips, birthdays, and family dinners showed compromising situations. My heart sank even further upon discovering that this man had suggested the idea of chastity to my wife. It seemed like my daughter and wife were in constant contact with him, using a fake username. Continuing to read, I found out that he was present at important family events, even at my house, sleeping in my bed during the months I was away over the past four years. The shock reached its peak when my daughter knocked on the bathroom door, visibly emotional. 
She didn't know what to say, while my wife, sister-in-law, and mother-in-law were present. I asked my mother-in-law if she knew about her daughter's actions, and she nodded. I turned to my daughter and apologized, saying I would try to be a better father, but I decided it was time to end the marriage. I addressed my wife, calling her for the first time the mother of my daughter. I announced that she had nine days to pack and leave with her family. I delivered the news that I would initiate the divorce process. Despite tears, my outbursts, and unexpected decisions, knowing I wasn't willing to discuss it at that moment, I gave up. I couldn't sleep that night, just staring at the wall and my phone, reviewing pictures of a family that now seemed shattered. The next morning, I asked my wife not to cook for me, as I didn't trust her. The relationship was completely out of tune, and I was determined to file for divorce. Today, she tried to have a conversation, but I wasn't willing to do so. My mother-in-law asked me to wait and listen before making any decisions. I turned to a lawyer friend I know and laid out the entire situation. She, with her 12 years of experience at 41, after seeing infuriating and sad cases, hugged me and said her uncle is a family judge and would likely handle my case. However, before that, I needed to gather substantial evidence. I hired a private investigator recommended by her. I called my daughter's phone, but got no answer. I spoke to my wife, who apologized repeatedly but showed no remorse. My daughter, sister-in-law, and mother kept their distance, with my daughter going so far as to stay at a friend's house for two days, fearing my reaction. The father of that friend called, and I had to explain the whole situation. He found it hard to believe what my daughter had done, as any father could never imagine being betrayed by their own children. The private investigator located the man my wife was cheating with. I found out he was a coward from the countryside, afraid of commitments, a thief working at the same place as my wife. I went to his house accompanied by the lawyer, private investigator, and a police friend. Through false allegations, we managed to confront him, and he confessed. I found out he was attracted to my wife and accepted a challenge from a colleague, claiming he would win her over. In the end, it turned into genuine love, and he was truly in love with my wife. He admitted to calling my mother a witch and was willing to provide a written statement, a confession video, photos, and even a witness in exchange for assurances that the news wouldn't reach his workplace. His mother, who was sick, was over 60 with a heart condition, and he wanted a few thousand dollars in return. I agreed to his conditions, and my wife moved out with her family. She managed to get a few more thousands from me for rent. Now, as for the final chapter, the divorce hearing and other details will be addressed in part 2, which will be in the next video on the channel. There is much more to this story, and the revenge is even more extreme than I could imagine. Part 2 will be available in the next video, but it won't be the first story. So, stay tuned not to miss it by activating notifications when subscribing to the channel. Up to this point in the story, it must have been overwhelming. It seems that the husband longed for family unity, demonstrating solidarity and understanding even in the face of his wife's lack of commitment and communication, along with the strange ultimatums. This situation ended up causing problems for him due to his wife's reaction. If each of these aspects were an isolated issue, it wouldn't be so serious, but the sequence of events gives the impression that he is constantly trying to resolve issues, while no one else seems to be as flexible as he is. I was surprised to see that he actually confronted the new guy, the one whom the daughter calls to be her father, the father she would like to have. I believe that was probably what shook him the most, more than anything else. The fact that, despite everything he felt he had done for his daughter and wife, she expressed the wish that this random guy would be her father. In this bizarre sphere among the mother, mother-in-law, and daughter, they all seem to live in a reality where everything is fine. Imagine spending your whole life working to support your family, and suddenly, they reveal this elaborate trick without even hesitating. It seems to be second nature to them, at least the way it is narrated here. Faced with this situation, I would like to know what you would do. Stay tuned for part 2 in the next video. When subscribing, don't forget to activate notifications to follow all the stories in this series. Use the playlist at the top of the description to access previous episodes.
I thank everyone who followed this thrilling episode of my Hista Reddit channel to the end. It's incredible to have such a dedicated audience. If you enjoyed this engaging story, don't forget to share it with your friends and family. Also, subscribe to the channel, leave your like, and activate the notification bell to not miss any content. Your support is essential for the channel's growth. Until the next episode.